Hey, my name is Chris Brennan, and this is your yearly horoscope forecast for the zodiac sign of Taurus for the entire year ahead of 2022. If you're new to my channel, then my name is Chris Brennan, and I'm the host of the Astrology Podcast and the author of a book on ancient astrology titled Hellenistic Astrology, The Study of Fate and Fortune. So in my approach, I synthesize a little bit of ancient and a little bit of modern astrology in order to get the best of both worlds. So each week I release new podcasts and videos on astrology on my channel, so if you'd like to get notifications when I release a new video, then please hit the subscribe button here on YouTube, and if you enjoy this video, then please consider hitting the like button to show me that you enjoyed the content and you'd like to see more of it. Okay, so my horoscopes are primarily meant to be read relative to your rising sign or your ascendant sign, which are essentially the same things. Although you can also watch them from the perspective of your sun sign, especially if you're born during the day, or your moon sign, especially if you're born at night. So the rising sign changes signs every hour or two during the course of the day, whereas the moon sign takes about two days to change signs, and the sun sign takes about a month to change signs. So as a result of that, the rising sign is much more personally relevant to you, and for that reason, I would really focus on that when you're looking at these horoscopes, or horoscopes in general for that matter. So if you don't know what your rising sign is, then all you need to do is find out your birth time and then go to a website where you can get your birth chart calculated, such as astro.com, and you should be able to get your ascendant or your birth rising sign calculated on those websites. So I have a video tutorial titled How to Calculate Your Ascendant and Rising Sign on my channel, which you can either search for or, or I'll put a link to it in the upper corner of this video right here. So let me know in the comments below what your sun, moon, and rising signs are, and which sign resonates with you more when you watch your video horoscopes like this one. All right, Taurus, let's do this. So let's jump into the transits for 2022. These are the transits we're going to cover. We're going to start with the Venus retrograde transit in Capricorn in your ninth house of education, philosophy, travel, and uh, religion. So here's a diagram that shows the houses of the planets and what they signify. That's your ninth house up there in the top right corner. And here is a circular diagram of your chart with Taurus rising. Here's the Venus retrograde, which actually started in December, but it's going to be ongoing through the early part of this year and isn't actually finished in Capricorn until like March. So this is actually a transit to pay attention to over the course of the next first few months of 2022. So it leaves March 6th, it looks like there. All right, so Venus retrogrades can sometimes indicate periods in which we go back and relook at or revise and renegotiate things, especially relationships or agreements that we've made with other people in the so social spheres. So for you, for you, this may involve going back and um, rethinking your approach to some of these topics that have to do with education, philosophy, your beliefs, how your beliefs are tied in with your relationships and other social structures in your life. And this may be kind of a difficult process because Venus actually stationed retrograde conjoining Pluto uh, late in December. And sometimes Pluto has to do with things like power plays, uh, manipulation, control, and things of that nature, which can be kind of tough to deal with. And there can be an intensity and a difficulty in dredging up past things or things from the past when it comes to this transit. So some of this may be accelerated or accentuated somewhat starting in late January when, even though Venus is stationing direct, Mars will ingress into Capricorn and kind of speed up some of the speed and some of the intensity when it comes to that transit over the course of February and early March. So it may be a good time to go back and rethink some of your beliefs, um, what your views are on the world, and what your overall philosophy of life is in some way. All right, the next transit I want to talk about is Jupiter is in currently, it recently moved into Pisces, which is your 11th house of friends, groups, and alliances. So this can actually be a really great period of growth and development when it comes to groups and friends in your life. There was a little preview of this transit for a little bit last year um, during the late spring of 2021 when Jupiter just briefly dipped into the sign of Pisces for a couple of months 
around May and June. So you would have had a little preview of what it, this larger transit should be about for the first four months of 2022. So generally speaking, uh, Jupiter transits through the 11th house um, just have to do with growth and expansion when it comes to friends. So it can be about making new friends, building new alliances, sometimes joining uh, social groups or other clubs and finding n ways to network with other people who are like-minded or people that support you in some way. So you do have to be a little bit careful because around April, Jupiter will conjoin the planet Neptune, which can be a planet that um, breaks down boundaries and um, gives you a greater sense of idealism and sometimes like otherworldliness in some ways. But the downsides is that sometimes Neptune can be kind of illusory or sometimes even kind of deceptive. So you might want to be a little bit careful here as you're building new friends and creating new friend groups that you don't sort of get carried away or you don't sort of walk into something that isn't what it seems at first, whether that has to do with a group or a person or what have you. Just be careful to keep maybe one foot on the ground if the other foot is, or if your head is in the clouds or, or what have you, whatever the analogy is. So that transit comes to kind of an end by the time we get to May, because Jupiter is actually going to leave your 11th house and it's going to go into uh, the sign of Aries, which is actually your 12th house of seclusion and isolation. So this may begin a period where, uh, whereas previously for the, the first four or five months of the year, you were feeling more social, once Jupiter moves into your 12th house, uh, this may be a period in which you decide to pull back a little bit and decide to focus on yourself for a period of time. Um, sometimes this can be a period where people can become very internal, go into a period of seclusion, um, but sometimes that can be really helpful and really healing, both um, not just physically, but also sometimes mentally or psychologically or even spiritually in some ways. So sometimes people seek refuge in places of isolation um, for this type of healing or for this type of internal introspection. And that can be something to think about. Uh, Jupiter going through the 12th house is also the last of the 12 houses. So in some ways, it's sort of preparing you to wrap up one 12-year cycle and preparing you to start a new 12-year cycle once Jupiter goes into Taurus next year in 2023. So there may be some theme of growth through endings or through bringing things to completion that have run their full cycle or run their full course. So this transit's taking place mostly in the second half of the year, uh, roughly from May 10th until October 28th, and then it comes back briefly December 20th through May 23rd. All right, so the next transit I wanted to talk about is Saturn is making its way through the second half of Aquarius and through the second half of your 10th house of career. So there is Aquarius in your 10th house up in the top part of the chart. So Saturn has been there for over a year now, I think like a year and a half, making its way through Aquarius. And um, Aquarius is your 10th house of career, reputation, and overall life direction. So Saturn going through this house may indicate a period of restructuring when it comes to what your goals and what your overall direction is career-wise. Sometimes this can indicate a period of setbacks or uh, difficulties, sometimes surmountable difficulties that come up. And if they don't stop you and if you're able to overcome them, then you end up emerging from that period stronger when it comes to some of your career goals. But in other instances, Saturn can sometimes um, give you sort of a stop sign and indicate a period where you've been proceeding down a certain path, but then all of a sudden you can't proceed further and Saturn kind of tells you, no, that you, you can't continue going down that specific path. You have to go another direction. So this can be a little bit frustrating or annoying at the time because one, um, it's not always clear at the time whether this is a full-on uh, Saturn saying no type situation, or whether um, this is one of those surmountable difficulties type situations. And unfortunately, you won't always know until basically after it's over. 
but it's good to keep both possibilities in mind and um, you know, try to identify which of those two scenarios it is as you're going through it and you know, be prepared to walk away from something if you have to. But if you don't, be prepared to bunker down and sort of fight for the long haul, and hopefully you will be uh, victorious or successful in the end. All right, so um, what's coming next? After Saturn going through your, your – so this is the last year of that or the last half of the year because by um, early – Saturn is going to leave Aquarius by March of 2023, so that transit's going to be over after this year. So this is the last of Saturn in your 10th house of career. Now, there may be some specific obstacles that come up where some of the obstacles you're encountering may be intensified when Mars conjoins Saturn around April 4th. This is kind of a tricky transit that will build up and then fade away before and after that time frame of April 4th. So you might want to watch out for it. It can be kind of frustrating because Mars usually wants to speed things up and excite action, whereas Saturn tends to slow things down and hold them back. So it may be experienced as a period of great tensions where you're sort of pulled in two different directions career-wise, and um, it can be hard to reconcile those two different, different impulses, whether they're coming from within you or whether they're coming from some external source that's kind of pushing on you in both of those ways. Um, additionally, you have an ongoing transit that's happening where Saturn is squaring Uranus off and on. Uh, it has been all of 2021, but that's going to continue into 2022. So I want to mention that because Uranus transiting through your first house is generally a transit that has to do with making sudden and radical changes when it comes to your personality and your overall life direction. And somehow some of those changes within your first house and your sense of self and mind and body, um, some of those radical changes are uh, causing tensions or coming into some sort of conflict with some of your career and public reputation and overall life direction 10th house themes. So especially in the third quarter of this year, when the Saturn Uranus square gets exact or get, gets close to exact again, you could see some of those tensions come to the forefront again, uh, where It'll sort of like be a period of stress testing where if there are any major stress or um, sort of fractures in the foundation of your life in those two areas of either self or career, then this could be a period in which um, things become much more unstable when you go through a period of testing. Whereas if those structures are on a more solid, solid foundation, while you may encounter some surmountable difficulties, in the end you'll come through it unscathed for the most part even if just a little bit rattled. All right. So the next thing I wanted to mention is actually pretty major, and this is that the Eclipse series has mo recently moved into the signs of Taurus and Scorpio, which is your first house, seventh house axis of self versus relationships. So what I think this is about is that some of the major some of the major changes that you've experienced over the past few years with with Uranus transiting through your first house and causing some major radical shifts in terms of your personality and in terms of your overall outlook on life, um, sometimes forcing you to be a little bit more rebellious or a little bit more unpredictable, some of that's going to get accelerated a little bit here with this transit of uh, the eclipses hitting the first house. Because my keyword for eclipses is great beginnings and great endings. So here, the great beginnings and great endings are going to focus on your first house of self and your seventh house of other people and especially relationships in your life. So this is usually a period where for about a year or two, a year and a half, a person will sort of bounce back and forth trying to find the right balance between uh, themselves and doing what's right for them and establishing what their own motivations and needs are in life versus figuring out what the place is and what the role is of other people in their life and what sort of energy they should put towards relationships. So sometimes seventh house eclipses can be a major period of beginnings, new new beginnings for relationships. So it could mark a significant turning point and new beginning or new relationship in your life. 
Other times, if there's a significant relationship already in your life, it can indicate either a major turning point and the end of a major chapter in that relationship, or in some instances, it can indicate for relationships that have neared the end of their life cycle that it's kind of time to wind it down and perhaps end that relationship. So that's something you're going to be paying a lot more attention to over the course of this year during the course of those four eclipses. Here's a graphic that shows dates. The first set of eclipses is in April and May, and then the second set is in late October and early November. So figuring out how to balance self versus others and your needs versus the needs of your partner or any close one-on-one -on -one relationships that you have in your life is going to be one of the major dominant themes of 2022 for those with Taurus rising. All right, and finally, the last transit I needed to mention is Mars is going to go retrograde in Gemini in your second house of finances, possessions, and assets. So here is the graph again, finances, possessions, and income. So Mars retrogrades uh, this is going to start in August, basically, as soon as Mars ingresses into Gemini on August 20th, but it's really going to speed up and intensify on o October 30th, which is when Mars will slow down and station in that specific uh, spot in your second house of finances. So sometimes this can speed up and force you to put more attention towards uh, things like making money and what it takes for you to bring in an income. So it can just indicate a period of being very busy and things being very hectic in that area of your life, where for some reason there's more stress involved and there's more of a quickness or a, a heightening of the pace of things when it comes to that area of your life. Um, in other instances, sometimes, especially for those of you with day charts or if this is a more difficult area in your birth chart, it may be an, a, an area where you have some uh, conflict or some sort of uh, stress that really comes up at this time when it comes to financial matters. So Mars can sometimes indicate severing or separating, so it might be good to be careful with finances during this time. One of the indications in a natal chart when somebody has Mars in the second can be spending money too quickly or too impulsively and then regretting it afterwards. Another instance of a downside to a Mars transit can sometimes be um, losses or uh, Mars traditionally was associated with theft. So it's a good period to be a little bit more careful when it comes to your finances and to try to think things out a little bit ahead of time so as to avoid any potential negative downsides or uh, other things like that when it could come to financial matters during the course of that retrograde transit. Uh, but that is what it should primarily relate to is just financial matters for you during this time. So I think that's the only that's the other that's pretty much all the major things I wanted to talk about um, during the course of this video. I'm just looking through the rest of my graphs, but that's pretty much the broad outlines of 2022 for those of you that have, especially Taurus rising in terms of the transits that the planets will take through each of your 12 houses. All right, that's it for this horoscope forecast for 2022. So as always, this was just a general forecast that focuses on some of the broad outlines of the year ahead. So if you'd like a more detailed analysis of some of the general transits this year, then be sure to check out our year ahead forecast for 2022 that we released in December. Uh, additionally, for a more detailed analysis of your chart, you might want to get a consultation with an astrologer because they can look at it in much more detail than I can go into here in just a general horoscope. Alternatively, or better yet, you could also learn how to read your birth chart and transits on your own, which would allow you to pinpoint some of the dates involved with much more precision and exactness. So if you'd like to learn more about my approach to astrology, then you can get a copy of my book titled Hellenistic Astrology, The Study of Fate and Fortune. And in this book, I reconstructed the original system of Western astrology and recovered some techniques that we had lost uh, many centuries ago. So with this book, I sort of teach you how to read a birth chart and how to use different timing techniques in order to determine when different things will happen during the course of your life, or in some instances during the course of a single year, as I've attempted to do in this horoscope forecast. So the book is available on Amazon as well as in other fine bookstores everywhere. 
I also teach an online course on ancient astrology, which has over 100 hours of video lectures. Uh, it shows hundreds of different example charts in order to show you how the different techniques work in practice. And it really gets into details that I couldn't go into as much in my book, even though the book is very big. Uh, in the course, I actually get into a lot more example charts, which really gives you better hands-on experience of how to use astrology to read birth charts in practice. So you can find out more information about that at courses.theastrologyschool.com. And finally, I also recently released my 2022 electional astrology report, where I went through the year and I picked out some of the most auspicious or lucky dates uh, with one lucky date or electional chart for each of the next 12 months. So these are useful for starting different types of ventures and undertakings using the principles of electional astrology. The report is also available at courses.theastrologyschool.com. All right, so that, that's it. So thanks for watching. Good luck in 2022, and may the stars be ever in your favor. A special thanks to all the patrons that supported the production of this episode of the podcast through our page on patreon.com. In particular, thanks to the patrons on our producers tier, including Nate Craddock, Thomas Miller, Catherine Conroy, Christy Moe, Ariana Amour, Mandy Ray, Angelique Nambo, Sumo Kopic, Issa Sabah, Jake Otero, Morgan McKinsey, and Kristen Otero. If you like the work that I'm doing here on the podcast and you would like to find a way to support it, then please consider becoming a patron through my page on patreon.com. And in exchange, you'll get access to bonus content such as early access to new episodes, the ability to attend the live recording of the month ahead forecast each month, access to a private monthly auspicious elections report that we put out each month, access to exclusive episodes that are only available for patrons, or you can also get your name listed in the credits at the end of each episode. For more information, go to patreon.com slash astrology podcast. The main software we use here on the podcast to look at astrological charts is called Solar Fire for Windows, which is available at alabe.com, and you can use the promo code AP15 to get a 15% discount. For Mac users, we use a similar set of software by the same programming team called AstroGold for Mac OS, which is available from astrogold.io, and you can use the promo code ASTROPODCAST15 to get a 15% discount on that as well. Also, special thanks to our sponsors, including the Mountain Astrologer magazine, which is available at mountainastrologer.com, the Honeycomb Collective Personal Astrological Almanacs, available at honeycomb.co, and the Astrogold Astrology app, which is available for both iPhone and Android at astrogold.io. There are also two major astrology conferences happening this year. The first is the Northwest Astrological Conference, happening May 26th through the 30th, 2022, near Seattle, Washington. Find out more information at norwak.net. And the second is the International Society for Astrological Research Conference, which is taking place August 25th through the 29th, 2022, in Westminster, Colorado. And you can find out more information about that at isar2022.org.